Technology is amazing. Sat-navs, the internet. We live in a world where cars heat our bums. <laughs> You're driving a scumfort, my arse is in Ibiza. And yet, <laughs> every time you open a paper, you read shrieking headlines like this. Robots to replace humans, it all work within 120 years! Who cares? <laughs> a, in 120 years, you'll be dead. <laughs> and B, nobody in this country likes their job. <laughs> We're British. <laughs> What's the American dream? If I work hard, I can be anyone. British dream? Lying. <laughs> if I hit snooze, I can get 15 minutes of naughty sleep. <laughs> Every one of you has put in an Oscar-winning performance to get a day off work. <laughs> I can't come in today. <laughs> my grandfather has died. <laughs> yes, my third grandfather. <laughs> very kind. This could be amazing. If robots are working for us, think of all the shit we won't have to put up with in the office. No bosses, no rotors, no team bonding, no more having to buy cakes because it's your birthday. <laughs> when did that become a rule? It's your special day, and you have to give people you don't like treats. <laughs> and they're never grateful. Is it vegan? Is it gluten-free? <laughs> Is it fair trade? It's a fucking cake, Sharon. <laughs> and I don't want to be rude, but you're clearly familiar. <laughs> and I know, I know there'll be people going, actually, I really love my job, it defines me. And you're like, you're going to be dead! <laughs> but if by some miracle you live until you're 160, think about it. You like your job now. Think how amazing the world's going to be in 120 years' time. There'll be, I don't know, teleportation. Mini David Attenborough's. <laughs> flying bacon sandwiches. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, surely that's better than admin. Like, anyone's going to be in 2138. I like jetpacks, but this whole punch isn't going to empty itself. <laughs> You won't even have hole punches in the future. You'll have a little robot that jumps on your desk and just goes, huh. <laughs> and yes, that's going to take some getting used to. <laughs> I've got it. Yeah. Do you want anything stapled? I'm all right, actually. <laughs> Robots could be amazing for us. Think of the current strain on doctors, nurses, teachers, the police. Maybe, in the future, all this could improve their lives. But no-one ever talks like that. It's always, they're going to take our jobs. We're giving them too much power. What if they rise up and kill us? <laughs> I mean, Christ, look at this shrieking headline. Self-driving cars are already deciding who to kill. <laughs> they're not. Self-driving cars will remove human error and save thousands of lives. But on the rare, 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 rare occasion that a crash is unavoidable, what they do, they analyse the road, they go, oh, look, there's young babies over there, there's old people, and they hit the old people instead. <laughs> right? That's what they do. And yet I can still feel pensioners going, they're going to kill us, they're not! <laughs> they're not going to be hunting old people. <laughs> You're not going to get Herbie revving his engine outside, <laughs> outside Mecca Bingo. <laughs> Smell knitting. <laughs> Let me hole punch them. <laughs> Mind you, most British people aren't worried about being killed by a Tesla. They've got other ideas. Brits say you would spend time commuting in driverless cars having sex. <laughs> Only in this country. <laughs> Behold, the self drive 5000. Any questions? Can I fuck in it? <laughs> it would be brutal, wouldn't it? Traffic jams are bad enough as it is without watching British people <laughs> pumping in a Prius. <laughs> that poor car's going to be wiping its windscreen with its own tears. <laughs> I've seen so many things. And it's not just cars. We are so stupidly horny. One in five British adults would have sex with a robot. Now, what I love, I can feel the aggression. I can feel the tension they're in, the women are going, men. <laughs> Typical dirty men, always thinking about your dicks. <laughs> to which I say, oh, fuck you. <laughs> you horny witches have been using robots for years, and all you did was snap off its finger. <laughs> you left the rest of him in the shed. <laughs> I'll come back for more when I need it. <laughs> I 
I've seen the devices you keep in your handbags. Some of these things have got fingers on top of fingers. <laughs> these contraptions are treating you like a bowling ball and you want to sit there and judge the fellas? <laughs> For shame. For shame. The sex robot industry is completely insane. I mean, look at this. A sex robot has been given a Scottish accent to make it sound less <laughs> robotic. <laughs> Two words. Andy Murray. <laughs> oh, that's quite nice. Of all, of all the accents you can have, French. <laughs> Ooh la la. Yeah. <laughs> Italian. Ciao bella. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking do me! <laughs> you know, right. Right. You know what I'm trying to say? We shouldn't be afraid of automation. And we can do greater things with robots than shag them. And yet, we never see these stories in the mainstream press. I mean, did you know we already have a bee drone that can pollinate flowers when real bees can't? Robots are helping researchers work to end world hunger, and robots can help detect cancer in less than a second. That's just three of the many things happening every day. Thanks to technology, we're already able to make dreams come true. Jack's a blue, so that this is his dream. To be a mascot at your club that you support is, is a huge thing. It's the first ever virtual um, match day mascot. If you look, that is Jack, 14-year-old Jack inside there, who will be controlling the mascot from home tonight. Oh, I mean, Phil Jack's when he, he come and he took him and he put him under his arm and we heard him saying, you know, let's go, Jack, come on. And, and then he, he was showing him to all the crowd and introducing him to all the other players, all the other mascots. It was just... I did get a bit choked up because it was just amazing. And that is the virtual mascot experience that 14-year-old Jack McLinden will be now seeing at his home in Walton. That's somebody saying Jack is Jack and not Jack is the boy in the wheelchair or Jack the boy with the oxygen. Seeing Jack as a boy. And that is just everything to us. That's now. Imagine how wonderful it will be in 120 years' time. <laughs> Not now. Millions of people across the UK have been unable to access the internet all day from their smartphones after the O2 network was hit by technical problems. It was such a first world problem. My phone doesn't work! <laughs> I can't get on the internet! I'm going to have to have <gasps> a conversation. <laughs> I was so stressed, I ate two jars of peanut butter. <laughs> I, this is so sad, but I genuinely lost it. I was pathetic. I was like, I need my phone. Think of all the people trying to contact me, my family, my friends, my work, my fans. <laughs> right, the next day, it started working. Not one message, you know. You're like... <laughs> now, not only did the Russians interfere with the US election, look what else they've been up to. Russia's defence ministry have also been putting in a shift today releasing these images as proof, they said, of America's collusion with the Islamic State. Except they later turned out to be doctored images of a video game. They used a... <laughs> they used a clip from an iPhone game. We've actually got hold of some of their other propaganda. They said the US were working with the Italians. Proof that Trump is already building the Mexican wall. <laughs> and they claim they had secret footage of a failed terror attack. <laughs> Did you hear about the driving test? Oh, my God. It's been updated so that morons can do it too. The driving test comes into force today. The new test will see an end to manoeuvres such as the three-point turn, but learners will now have to follow directions from a sat-nav. <laughs> oh, what's that? Following a sat-nav? I can't believe I passed what with having a robot telling me exactly where and when to go. <laughs> I got the gift. <laughs> turn left. I'm doing it. <laughs> turn right. I'm a genius. <laughs> Driving is so easy now. Power steering, cruise control. When you reverse, you have beepers. What do we have? Mums. <laughs> back a bit, back a bit, back a bit. <laughs> it's too far. <laughs> 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 
The most dazzling gadget I had on my car was the choke. Do you remember the choke? <laughs> Pull the choke, pump the clutch. <laughs> it was like trying to bring a dinner lady to orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Choke me! Choke me! <laughs> <laughs> and sat, I imagine, and sat <laughs> I like the fact that there'll be a dinner lady going, he's got that bang on! <laughs> I sometimes think there's too much technology in the world. Do you ever feel like that? And it's not just cars. Do we really need this? A company has invented a smart condom that can rate your performance <laughs> in the bedroom. <laughs> rate your performance. It's sex! It's not strictly. <laughs> How was that for you? Seven! <laughs> Who wants to be reviewed by a Johnny? Just sat in the bin like that. A very poor performance from... <laughs> from How Hard. <laughs> I'd give him a soft five, which is exactly what he gave her. <laughs> <laughs> it's mental. And it doesn't just rate you, it shows you the amount of calories you're burning, your session duration, your girth, your speed, and the number of thrusts. <laughs> We've invented a Fitbit for dicks. <laughs> and this is the maddest bit. Users will have the option to share their recent data <laughs> with their friends. <laughs> Who, in their right mind, is going to share their fuck stats with a pal? <laughs> what did your family find out? How awkward would that be during Sunday dinner? You're enjoying your nut roast, Nan? That's what your Johnny said. <laughs> Says here you're a 67 thrust man with an average dick speed of six miles an hour. <laughs> Not that everyone gets on the technology. Look at this idiot. Firefighter has spent an hour freeing an internet prankster who cemented his head inside a microwave oven at a house in Wolverhampton. <laughs> Look at it. Look at this man. Look. He looks like a Poundland Stormtrooper. <laughs> Did you see the footage? It is spellbinding. Oh, my... Bro, that's solid. That is solid. <laughs> bro. <laughs> that's so mad. Bro, you're facing the wrong way. They finally got me out, and I've never appreciated life so much, ever. <laughs> I've never appreciated life so much. You don't know what it's like to be alive until you've been a ready meal. <laughs> when they got me head out, they made me stand for 30 seconds. <laughs> Imagine if he had a die. You know at the end of the funeral what his mates would have gone. Ding! <laughs> and just stabbed the coffin with a fork. <laughs> now. Fair to say, we as a species are self-obsessed. We measure our followers, our likes, our retweets. We go on Google Earth, what do we look at? Our house. <laughs> FaceTime. We're speaking to someone else, what are we looking at? Our own face. <laughs> Hello, mother. <laughs> we can't tear ourselves away from our phones. Young adults will take more than 25,000 pictures of themselves during their lifetimes. 25,000 selfies. We're gonna have nothing to teach our grandchildren. That's me. That's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. That's the phase I was going through when I was pretending to be a duck. That's, <laughs> that's me. Oh, that's me at work. I'm one of the 39%. Some, some people are so obsessed with selfies, they're taking them at funerals. Who thinks about themselves at a funeral? Dearly beloved, we're here to remember John and me. <laughs> are they leaning into a coffin? Bye, Nan. Face swap. <laughs> it's not just selfies. We count our steps. I'm the worst. I've got a Fitbit. I know how many steps I've taken every day. How is that useful? I'll do anything to get my 10,000 in. I end most nights just walking around my bedroom <laughs> like a drunk penguin. <laughs> and some people don't even care how they make their 10,000. Did you know some individuals are placing wearable trackers on their small children or ceiling fans <laughs> to rack up extra points? How mad's that? I want the world to know how healthy I am. Julia, get on the treadmill. <laughs> I'm putting it on a ceiling fan. It's going to freak your mates out. Oh, my God, Linda's on a wall doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know the worst thing about the 10,000 steps? It's not even a thing. 
10,000 step goal is marketing, not science. It was an advertising campaign for a Japanese pedometer from the 60s. It wasn't based on any studies or science. It just sounded like a good number. You can't live your life by slogans. Slogans are bullshit. A Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. It doesn't. It gives you man boobs. <laughs> we buy any car. Bullshit. I took this in the other day. <laughs> and they told me, and I'm quoting here, to get the fuck out of their shop. <laughs> and it's not just measuring our steps. We analyse everything. Someone has made an app-connected hairbrush which helps you brush your hair more efficiently. Who struggles with the hairbrushing inefficiency? Someone like that. One, <laughs> two, three. Why can't it be taught a better way? Three. <laughs> Not only that, we have a fork that counts how much you eat and has a warning light if you eat too fast. Do we really need fat shaming cutlery? <laughs> it's messed up though. In a few years, they'll be like, they'll be slagging you off in the dishwasher. Just what a fat bastard. <laughs> He won't stop bloody eating, just a spoon in the corner. Five pots of ice cream he's had today. <laughs> What's that with you, scissors? He used me to trim his pubes. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. You can get an app to record everywhere you've shat. <laughs> There's even an app to collate and measure your STDs. I believe they call it Tinder. What? <laughs> what I want to know. What I want to know. know. Why is all this information collected? Are people going to use in a eulogy? Just a vicar. He averaged 17,000 steps, brushed his hair efficiently, and once did a shit in Preston. <laughs> Let's all take a selfie. <laughs> We're competing with each other to be the perfect self. Got to have the right body. Got to say the right things. Got to use the right filter. We live in an age where we like everything except ourselves. Did you know some people are getting surgery to look like their Snapchat selfies? Don't compete with the fake you. Fuck that fraudulent hologram. Getting surgery to look like your Snapchat is dangerous. What if you give the doctor the wrong picture? <laughs> Nobody wants to wake up looking like this. <laughs> We need to put down the phone, stop staring at ourselves, stop counting how much we slept or how we brush our hair, because the best things in life can't be measured, like how a hug feels, an old couple holding hands, seeing a greyhound that looks like your auntie. <laughs> a toddler dancing to an inappropriate song. When them titties jiggle, jiggle, and their ass go pop. <laughs> Finding a tenor in an old coat when your mate takes a football to the nuts. That first piss after the cinema, fucking Hobbit! <laughs> your mum's Sunday dinner, your dad's Sunday fart. <laughs> when you make someone laugh till snot comes out. You ever done that? <laughs> it's beautiful and hideous all at the same time. <laughs> what I'm saying, give me wonky people over perfect avatars any day, because people can take your breath away when you least expect it. I was at a festival and I saw a guy whose son had his face painted like a tiger. And the dad said, come on. Let's find someone on mushrooms and freak them out. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot measure how that made me feel. Oh, this may be the creepiest dating app ever. Refrigy dating app aims to help you find a date based on what's in your fridge. <laughs> Let's be honest, they've just misunderstood the phrase check is smeg. In case. <laughs> In case you're interested... <laughs> in case you're interested, here's how it works. With the app, you take a photo of the inside of your fridge to share and you swipe right or left... <laughs> left? Based... <laughs> you swipe left or right based on how the contents of someone else's speak to you. Let's be honest. People are going to do what they always do. They're going to lie. I guarantee people will be photoshopping their fridges. It'll be all kale and goji berries, just eggs. We were laid by a happy chicken. <laughs> the Lurpak man will be in there. <laughs> Love. You open it up, it'll look like embarrassing bodies. The cheese will look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Male sex robots with unstoppable bionic penises are coming this year. <laughs> Don't cheer that. Don't cheer that. No! Why? Yeah, what? <laughs> See, that's why we're in the state we are. <laughs>
got a cure for the virus? No, but we do have a robot with a dick like a jackhammer. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Who wants a bionic penis that's unstoppable? <laughs> How did Nan die in ecstasy? <laughs> do you know the weirdest thing about this robot? He looks like me. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> Pose for a mannequin, they said. <laughs> I thought I was going to be a Madame Two Swords. They've turned me into <laughs> fucking Robocop. <laughs> Scientists found out what the voice of a 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummy sounds like. Hmm? Here's how they did it. Scientists were able to mimic Nessie Amun's voice by recreating his mouth and vocal cords with a 3D printer. And here is what a 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummy sounds like. <laughs> All these years, we've been terrified of mummies. Turns out they sound like sarcastic goats. <laughs> <laughs> now, talking. Now, fair to say, we are addicted to screens. Did you know the average person checks their phone every 12 minutes? That's over 29,000 times a year. We're addicted. You ever lost your phone? You turn into Liam Neeson. You're like, <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> I will not stop. Oh, it's in my hand. <laughs> I mean, Christ, 11% admit to checking their phone during a funeral. <laughs> Correct! <laughs> I miss Grandad so much. He was such a kind man. <laughs> <laughs> a picture of a llama that looks like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Imagine burying your nan and you find out that Liverpool have scored. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Yes! <laughs> what a fucking lovely service! <laughs> In fact, watching football at a funeral would be a nightmare. I'd say, like, get in there! <laughs> Stick it in the box! <laughs> Stop fanning it around and bury it! I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's not just funerals. 7% admit to checking their phone during sex. <laughs> I mean, come on! What is so important, it can't wait 18 seconds. <laughs> oh, I banged her twice. It's insane. <laughs> Who is there making sweet love? Just going, have a look at that, look. <laughs> he does look like Ed Sheeran, doesn't he? <laughs> Pass it on, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just phones. We're sat in front of tellies like zombies. Have you ever had that? You know when the TV comes up? If you're on the screen, it goes, you have 60 seconds until this TV turns... It's like the telly's going, I should turn myself off. I've been on for so long, they must be dead. <laughs> no human could watch TV for this long, and you're like, ah, where's the TV remote? 45 seconds, find it! If we don't do something, we'll have to talk to each other. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I nearly missed the end of Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs> We're so crazy for screens that one screen isn't even enough. 80% of us double screen. We all do it. You're probably doing it now. We're watching a film around a mate, so my girlfriend was on the phone the whole time checking on our dog. She's got an app called a Furbo where you can spy on the dog through your phone. What is she expecting to see? <laughs> like she's going to switch it on and he's running a small business. <laughs> <laughs> you Chinese kids better make me some training. I mean, woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's never that. The only thing my dog will be doing is pumping his pillow. <laughs> A dog shouldn't be spied on. It should be used for its true purpose, dressing up like Mother Teresa. <laughs> That's my actual dog, and that is one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Not only are phones rotting our brains, they're changing us physically. We're hunched over. <laughs> We're going to end up looking like fucking prawns. <laughs> In fact, in a few generations, experts have worked out smartphones might make our hands look like this. <laughs> look at that! Looks like Voldemort's wank glove. <laughs> and in case you don't think phones are dangerous, look at this.
Bill Gates and Steve Jobs raised their kids tech-free. It's almost as if they knew the damage they could cause. Can you imagine Steve Jobs' kids? Dad, can we have an iPad? No! Why? Because of this! <laughs> Fear the phone! Now... Now... Now, don't get me wrong, right? <laughs> I'm not one of those, I don't think we should have a phone kind of a guy. It's like me and my mum met this guy in India, and he was all like, I don't have a phone. When I want to know the answer, I ask the universe. <laughs> it was all tie-dye and judgment. I'm here to find myself. And my mum went, if I were you, I'd stop fucking looking. <laughs> <laughs> you appear to arrive at Dickhead Avenue. <laughs> but it is ridiculous at the moment. You have this device that gives you everything, so you take in none of the world. And it's all fake. We're checking up on our friends' social media. We're not enjoying life. We're enjoying a version of their life that isn't really their life. But then we compare it to our life and then post a fake version of our life to compete with the fake version of their life. Fucking <laughs> Nobody knows what it's like to just be anymore. Being bored is when you have ideas. But now, as soon as there's a pause, someone's whipped out their phone. Sometimes, the maddest... <laughs> Sometimes, the maddest bits of life occur when you put the phone down and live in the moment. Like... <laughs> the point I'm making... Sometimes, if you're off the phone, you may see a llama that looks just like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs>